Good morning, folks. Three chapters of Star Water Down, one to go. And NASA, Goddard Space Flight Center, ESA, and Hubble are expanding on the volume of information that we already possess. We saw the Galice evidence and have dove down deeper into it, but we're now pulling through a wider nozzle and finding water in exoplanet atmospheres by the handful. Hubble snapped shots of five new water-rich exoplanet atmospheres. The experts are surprised at their findings, and I meet their incredulity with a baffled gaze. To their shock and amazement, it's not just them, but many other researchers are coming to the same conclusions regarding exoplanet atmospheres. They're even beginning to speculate that these cloudy atmospheres may be normal for hot Jupiters. Now why am I not surprised? Why am I not incredulous? Because star water tells you that stars are water factories. The Genesis mission detected every known element in the solar wind. Electrochemical combination potential fills in most of the rest of the story and we're discovering that cosmic jets share similar compositions to solar wind and CMEs. I wish I could tell you that all this information that's poured out in the last 18 months, seemingly right on cue, was on its way, but I'd be lying. The explanation here is that an eruption at this mid-sized volcano shot lava one kilometer up into the air. Someone's going to need to explain to me how it holds in those tight ropes, thinner at the bottom, and how they had the upward force to reach 1,000 meters but also had the ability to change direction in mid-air and keep right on going up. Said it last night and I'll do so again now. It's another example of red volcanic lightning, rarely of this aesthetic splendor. We're going to swing over to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, eyeing development in the Indian Ocean, measurement mission indicating condensed power to the southern cell. East of those two storms, we're watching remnants affecting Guam on its leading edge already. Going to stick around for at least another day. Yap should be out of the woods for now. Are you kidding me? Dude, stop hailing in southern Africa. This time it was a hospital taking most of the damage. Reactor shutdown at Dungeness again due to issues with a turbine condenser. North of that is what we warned of yesterday with the line drawing up from way, way to the southwest. Coming to the U.S., snow convergence moving west to east across the country. The weather associated is driven below at the surface winds, where a counterclockwise low is smashing together heat, cold, dry, moisture, and differing electric potentials. Thunderstorms, wind, and rain lead a major cool down, sleeting ice, and major snow for some areas. Solar wind shows speed dropping slightly overnight with density finally succumbing to the drop down as well. It was ultimately unable to rouse the KP index past 3, did get a definitive reaction from the electron flux and magnetometer but even the sensitive charts are recovering now. Remember when these crested? Boy have they decayed and managed to keep their calm magnetic separation to boot. I expect no flaring from them until they depart the earth facing disk. Alas, we did have some mid-level sea flares though. But in another aspect of the solar shutdown that has been present for over a year, both occurred on the limb and will not even come close to affecting Earth's magnetic shield. Looking at an equatorial cut of the magnetic influence from the open solar magnetic fields, watch negative red get boxed out for the second time in two weeks. This happens as the upper fields again ruin the second half of my quake watch. We started with a flurry after five days of total quiet, but the coronal magnetics keep coming in to block and are morphing and are now opening the other way. Just as coronal hole power left us yesterday, it's coming back now. Upper fields are pretty unpredictable. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.